Hey everyone, Genome here, coming to you with the next episode of my video game retro review series. This is the series where I take a look back at games of your, at least ones that I enjoyed, you know, playing coming on up, and uh, decide if they still hold, uh, you know, all of their value that I thought they held back then. You know, some games you think are going to be ageless, and then you go out and play them 20 years later, and, you know, not so much. It's a trap! But luckily for us, today's uh, gem is not one of, of those games, right? This game just seems to hold up very well, and uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, this is an underappreciated gem from 2004 from EA Games, no less. And they were not always known for putting out the best, and you know, outside of sports quality games. Uh, that is 2004's The Lord of the Rings: The Third Age. Wow! What do you know? Okay, so I hear everybody out there right now saying, "Genome." This is the Lord of the Rings game. It's going to be awful. That's what I was going to say. This is an EA game that's not a sports game. This is going to be awful. Here, let me take that urine specimen from you, Frank. And usually the most salient point is, Genome, this is a licensed game. They are all awful. Is that a fact? Mm. That's a fact. Not true. There are some decent ones out there. Think of the Batman Arkham games. <clears throat> Those came out very well. You know, say what you will about how they tie into the actual comics universe or cartoon universe, but they're just fun. Those are fun, well-crafted games and uh, very enjoyable. So, <clears throat> you know, if enough care is given to a property, it can be good, licensed or no, right? Well, I believe this is just such a game, right? This is set in a turn-based RPG format. This is a lot like... Final Fantasy X's battle system. Lots of uh, ways to manipulate turn order, status effects, that sort of thing. But it's it's a little more simplistic in the backbone of it. Uh, and much more simplistic in the story. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. So basically, what this game is all about <clears throat> is a rehash of the movie. Yes, that part of the game is lackluster, to say the least. The story is strange. Uh, we follow our main protagonist, Barathor. He's a captain of the Citadel Guard from um, uh, Gondor, right? And he's walking around with convenient amnesia. How about that? And so basically, we follow the trials and tribulations of him. He's trying to get to Boromir for reasons that he doesn't quite know yet. But uh, I won't spoil it for you, but there's a story tie-in here, right? Very loose story tie-in here. And uh, basically, we find our merry band of never have beens <laughs> following directly in the footsteps of the Fellowship of the Ring, all the way up to the end of Return of the King. So basically, this condenses all three stories into one. It's just an undercurrent <clears throat> that follows along with the story. Now, as is often the case of this era, especially with you know CD games and especially with licensed properties, this game reminds you, never fails to remind you on a regular basis this is the lord of the rings movie adaptation right <clears throat> there are film clips everywhere i think there's like a hundred uh clips of varying uh, lengths in this the world of middle earth is changing the beauty of the elves fades and uh <clears throat> unlike a lot of upper echelon uh, like rpgs and other games of its ilk uh this actually lets you skip the cutscenes, which is a blessing because, especially if you play it more than once, you definitely don't want to see these again. You know, despite what they do with the voiceovers, the voiceovers are different than what you're seeing from the clips. Um, it's just the same rehash scenes from the movies. Now, I will say this, they went a step above and used a lot of footage from the extended cuts that a lot of people haven't seen. So that that's kind of cool. It gives it a, a bit of a breath of fresh air and and, 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 they got Sir Ian McKellen to do the voiceover of Gandalf. And unlike a lot of, you know, people who come in and do their celebrity voiceovers or whatever for the characters, he puts just as much gravitas and as much, you know, refinement into his voiceovers in this game as he does in the movie. So it's not, he just, it wasn't just a quick, easy cash grab. He went in there and, and did it justice, right? The ancient spirits of earth, fire, air, and water who once roamed this earth freely are forgotten but it was not always so good fan service there so he's kind of the narrator of this entire story so he apparently knows Barathor well so but so kudos to that so I wasn't a big fan of the constant you know CD image cutscenes that you get throughout this 
But the voiceovers were good, and you did have the ability to skip them, which is so many games could learn from that. <clears throat> Alright, so along the way, uh, we are confronted with all the various enemies that we've grown accustomed to in the movies and books, right? You got orcs, goblins, uh, cave trolls, uh, even got oliphants and um, Easterlings, you know, a little lesser known stuff, but that's for like the Return of the King stuff, you know, uh, battle. You might remember that from the last film, right? Or books. So there's that's pretty cool. They they went through a lot of trouble to add um, basically all known characters or and and uh, enemies <coughs> from the books and movies into this game. So that's pretty cool. There is some rehashing of them as we go on, but I mean. It is what it is. Most of the time, they look great, by the way. Um, I'll get into that a little bit more as we talk about graphics and things. So, yeah, you run across basically every big villain, including Sauron and, uh, like, the Witch King of Angmar and the Ring Race and, like I said, Oliphants. You, you'll fight it all in this, right? Um, even the Balrog makes an appearance. What an appearance. So, yeah, along the way, Barathor picks up a, a merry band of his own fellowship, right? So it's like he picks up the very first character he gets in the game, which is a few minutes in, is Idriel, a uh, wood elf. And uh, later on, he meets a ranger, a Dunedin ranger, in the name of, well, in the form of Elago, should I say. Hold on! Hello, lovelies. He comes along a dwarf, a very Gimli-esque dwarf, named Hadhod, which is incidentally the dwarven name for dwarf. Interesting. My cat's breath smells like cat food. <clears throat> um, and then later on, you even pick up a Rohan uh, Spearman. Uh, what was his name? Oh, I can't think of it now. Say it. Say it. Arrow... I can't remember his name, but um, Aodin, that's what it is. And finally, you get a Rohan shield maiden-esque, kind of Viking-esque character uh, in, the name, in the guise of Air Eowyn. So, you get a decent collection of people, uh, but really, you can, you can fly through this game with just using three mains and, and none have a problem, right? This game is not especially hard um, on really any setting or any configuration that you use as long as you learn to abuse things like status ailments and uh, order manipulation you can really kind of just cruise this game uh, there is some challenge to be had later on because uh, the game goes into overdrive after Helm's Deep and it just launches up the health and uh, status attacks of the enemies uh, like tenfold so you'll be on your back heel at, at times there's some things you can abuse to get past this but uh, we won't spoil everything for you so yeah, we, we have some twists and turns and some really cringy romantic liaisons here between Barathor and Idriel and Eowyn and definitely could have done without that. This movie, basic, or this movie, I should say this movie really, but this game it follows directly at the footsteps of the Fellowship, meaning you are literally like sometimes 10 steps behind what's happening in the movie that you've seen, right? Or in the books. Like... It doesn't really make any sense. They enter in Boria after the wall has been collapsed. It's been opened up again by the same uh, watcher in the water as closed it up the first time. And it's just... It's, you have to really stretch your, your disbelief in some of this, right? You actually wind up, spoiler alert, you kind of wind up fighting the Balrog along with Gandalf in Khazad Doom on the bridge. You were there. didn't see him in the movie or hear about in the books but really trust me you were they were there it's an epic epic fight though by the way but uh so yeah you have to you have to suspend some distance sleep but you go all the way to the end all the way to the attack on the black gate and uh we'll just leave it at that so if these guys are tagalongs and they really get to be inserted into the main overarching plot of what we all know uh, on a regular basis suspend your disbelief and you know I don't know, just put the ego in check, and you can enjoy it. It's no big deal. You're not expecting, you know, <laughs> King Lear here, right? Um, for a licensed game. A man. Badly wounded. Wait for the wargs to approach. They'll kill him. So let's get into some uh, pros and cons of this game. Let's start with cons. Uh, let's get that out of the way right now. 
This game is exceedingly linear. It is an open world kind of setup, but the worlds are a lot smaller than you might think they are just from the visuals because it gives you pretty far off shots, right, of everything, and you're pretty much combined or you know confined to hallways and that sort of thing. It's real linear. So some people might not like that. It suits this game just fine. Uh, but you can backtrack at any point you like to in the game, which is a nice uh, plus. But, you know, for those looking for the true open world experience, this really isn't it. Um, because you have to beat the old, like the original starting zone to go to the next zone. And then you can backtrack, but you can't do it before that. You can't jump ahead to in like a real open world environment. I know I didn't describe that very well, but that's basically what it is. So it's, it's quite linear. Uh, replay, replay value is v almost nil. In fact, the only thing that's interesting about replay this game is trying different configurations, which I do like, right? So that part's cool, but yeah, you're not going to have any new story modes or randomizers or it's, there's nothing new. There's no carryovers. So there's that to consider, right? So if you're the kind of person only plays a game once and then hopes for replay value out of other modes, you're going to be sorely disappointed here. Um, story is pretty hokey but it's 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 actually kind of intricate the way they tie it in with the movies and all that so it's not bad it's just some things are kind of lame all oh, that romance stuff is just awful in this game it's so cringe inducing it's not even funny and every time we start to make love you have a headache i'm not a piece of meat jane i'm trying i've got ointments lotions creams books things that vibrate man they should have omitted that but <clears throat> other than that it's okay it's just that you know, you have to get used to basically using the B team. <laughs> if you can look past that, and then you can get some enjoyment out of it, right? Um, the grind. And this part's a little bit more, I don't know, vague, because some people, myself included, really enjoy grinding characters. And this is not so much grinding characters for stat points, which you have an ample amount of those to distribute every time you level up and all that. But if you want like all the abilities and passives in this game it takes a lot of grinding and this is where some of what this game does falls apart right because let's take for instance Barathor your, your main character he has two different uh, crafts right and you can add lots more I'm not gonna get into all that but swordcraft and leadership right so swordcraft is basically just that it's attacks usually attacking type things um, his uh, leadership is basically buff. He buffs the entire party with different calls. He has several of them. Ones that regain basically mana, ones that regain health, ones that make you immune to stuns, ones that increase your attack power, momentum. It's, they wind up being very necessary later on in the game especially. So he's a very useful character. The way these things are... The way you learn them is by using a skill. So say he wants to learn... I think the first skill is like Citadel Strike or something, or Citadel Rage, and that's where you hit twice instead of once, right? It costs a certain amount of mana to do. Uh, but you have to, you only level up skills one point for every time you use them, right? So if you use his first ability, which is, I can't remember what, like Orc Strike or something like that, okay, every time you use it, one point, so you gotta use that skill 20 times to learn the next one, right? Not so bad, right? Well, once you start getting into the later stuff that's pretty powerful, it's hundreds. There are skills in this game that take like 200, I think, 250, something like that. Ridiculous amounts of skill points. So, basically, if you really want to see everything, you have got to grind uh, your eyeballs into the dust um, working on these characters. Uh, there's ways to abuse this later on uh, with things like sleep arrows and, uh, and other things like that so if you're a completionist get ready to be pushing the button and seeing a lot of the same animations over again um it's it's i like the system somewhat but there should be a way to speed it up because it just takes way too long and by the time you get um enough points for things like uh, uh what was it like flames of ruin or whatever like that huge spell from hat the dwarf it's like it's it's beyond it's almost useless at that point because you've already leveled up your other stats so high and other spells are just more uh, user friendly by your mana and all that so it's just not really worth the investment other than to see the killer animations and we'll get into that a little bit later so there is that um that's a negative another negative too is with every special ability that it's not 
doesn't say attack, plain attack, or something like that, or using even items that do this. Basically, every action you take is has a mini animation. It can last anywhere from like two seconds to six seconds, I think, and some of the longer ones. It gets old when you start seeing these things 50, 60, 100, 200 times. Yeah, you don't want to see them anymore, and so you really wish you could speed that up and skip those. So it's it's cool that the game lets you skip uh, a lot of the cutscenes, but it does not let you skip the animations, and that part can really grind on people. It, it grinds on me, because I like to grind out <laughs> most of the powers, right, to see the cool stuff. But, so there's that. Um, the actual interface is pretty simplistic. I don't mind this so much. I think it gets the job done just fine. Um, but if you're expecting things like the sphere grid or whatever... Uh, was it Crystarium or whatever from the Final Fantasy series? You're not going to find that here. It's real simple point-and-click stuff. Or not even point-and-click. It's, <laughs> it's just basically move use your arrow keys around there and you know push the A, X button a lot of times. So it's, it's there's not a lot of you know, theory crafting to be had here. You want your melee characters to get lots of strength for stronger hits. You want your uh, magic users to get more spirit so they can cast more spells, right? It's all pretty intuitive, but you can tweak these things however you want. You can make Adriel a freaking swordsmith and completely ignore her healing and magic, and you can make Barathor just a um, just a buff machine and a kind of a defensive like type character. Um, may not be the most efficient way to do things, but that's one cool thing this game does allow you to do. It allows you to change up how the the game itself is played by the way you build your characters. That part's cool. Um, what else is bad here? Um, not really much else. The final boss is a bit of a letdown, but I guess it really wasn't like any other way to pull it off. But it, it is kind of weird at the end. You don't know if you live or die. I'll just put it like that because <laughs> of what we've seen in the movie and what we see in this game, it doesn't really line up too well. So I don't know. We'll assume they live because of the voiceover, right? So yeah, there's a couple cons to be had here. Um, but you should be able to get this game pretty cheap, at least you were able to back when this was, even came out. It wasn't too expensive. After like five months, I think it was still a twenty dollar game or something like that. And I'm sure you can still probably get it for that on, you know, Amazon or eBay or something. <clears throat> so yes, there's some there's some negatives to be had here. Uh, most of it is basically just the grind that this game can turn into, and maybe some pretty cheesy story and repetitiveness. Repetitiveness is probably the real Achilles heel of this game for some people. So. Achilles aside here, let's talk about some pros, because this game has a lot of pros. Um, first off, this is much better and a much higher quality game than you're used to getting uh, from both from EA, that's a non-sports title, that is, and a licensed property. <laughs> you're right! They actually took the time to interweave the story around the movies. You know, shallow a little bit, but it's still there. They took the time to have E. McKellen give good lines. Uh, obviously, you get good engineering directors, uh, and they, his voiceovers are great, if a little bit, maybe too often. But uh, so, yeah, that was nice. They didn't cheap out there and get some wannabe to do it. Um, this game's combat, I find it very refreshing. I'm old school RPG, or I like turn based, and this game does it very well. You got a little little window up there that shows you like the next I think like five or six actions from both human and enemy. So you can really every turn, especially in the later in the later stages, it becomes kind of a you calculate everything you do because you even though you think it maybe it takes out some of the strategy or it takes out some of the thrill of the game, right? To see your turns ahead of time. It, does, it allows for a lot of different strategies in this game, and it really, like I said, it comes into play a lot more later on when you got things like status effects to worry about, uh, complete stuns. You can have your whole entire team stunned if you're not careful, and then they just wail on you until you die. Incredibly frustrating, so you got to learn how to play against that sort of thing, right? Um, so, but and, and the characters themselves differentiate themselves somewhat. There's a lot of sameness. You know, that's that's going to go with any RPG. But they do differentiate themselves all in little subtle ways. You know, like Morwen does double hits with her axe. Uh, you know, Barathor sword slashes. He starts adding more and more to the special skills, right? Um, and generally, the things get more impressive looking as you go up. So that just makes sense, right? But it's, it's pretty cool that you can <clears throat> attack most battles in a very strategic way. And it never completely becomes auto or dull or old, you know? Yeah. 
you start learning what's going on, but I mean, it's, I don't know. I just like the way they pull off the turn-based content here. I think it works very well. Uh, the animations and graphics of this game. Woo, man. Without hyperbole, I think this is technically one of the better looking PS2 games there is. Yes, the character models are a little bit iffy, you know, a little bit rough around the edges. They could use some more polygons or whatever, but for the most part, they look great. Most of the battle animations look incredible. This has some of, if not the, best particle, particle effects on the PS2. Like, all these special moves have just different bits of energy flying everywhere. Some of the later spells, like Northern Storm or... Uh, Flames of Ruin or something, Flaming Fury, look incredible. You got whole a gigantic like volcanoes spewing boulders everywhere and fire. <laughs> and big electrical storms blowing things up. It just looks stupendous. Uh, now, this is offset a little bit by, by the fact that you kind of get sick of them after a while, but everything just looks so good. Big trails behind the heel spells, big explosions of particles when the heel hits you. Just looks amazing. Another great perk and bonus to this game is every piece of gear outside of, like, necklaces. Eh, this might even show, too. Um, actually changes in appearance on your character as you equip it. And you can equip, like, greaves, or greaves, I'm holding my arm, but gauntlets, uh, greaves for your legs different chest plates, helmets, weapons, everything looks different and changes as you equip it. So that part is a very nice touch. It does limit a little bit of uh, the amount of weapons and gear you have in this game, but there's plenty of weapons and gear in this game to find and equip and win. Looks looks great. I, I think the graphics are maybe the strongest point of this game. Most of the enemies look incredible, actually. Like, the goblins are personal favorites of mine. They look so good. The Easterlings look great. Even the Oliphants later on, the, you know, the, the battle elephants that you see later on, just look incredible, man. Um, yeah, no complaints from the graphics department. Uh, some of the environments are a little bit bland, but some are pretty cool. You see, like, ancient elven shrines and all that that you didn't see in the movies. <clears throat> so that part's kind of cool. And, uh, yeah, the enemies just look really good. Uh, the sounds in this game are very satisfying. Music is pretty good. Very uh, you know, Lord of the Ring-ish, what we're used to from the films. But, like the thunks uh, and slashes from like the swords and, and the bows in this game just sound great. When the enemy or you shoot an arrow into a character, right, it makes this <laughs> and the arrow stays lodged in your character for the duration of that fight. You can have like two arrows sticking out of your body while you're fighting. It's, I mean, it's not very realistic, but I mean, it, it's, a, it's a nice little touch that they added there and just everything has a real meat and weight to it as far as sounds go so looks and sounds incredible um the voiceovers are i'd say pretty good really good in fact uh they all really definitely channel their inner, inner lord of the rings and they do a very admirable job i'd say you live no thanks to you can't you see i was hunting them you want to use the crows lure the wargs in close they kill faster that way uh, the Nazgul are very annoying, but they're annoying in the movie, too, so what are you going to do? Um, of special note in the graphical department, the Balrog fight is a treat, and that fight will bring your PS2 to its knees. <laughs> Every now and then, you'll get some pretty serious slowdown in that fight, because there's so much going on, and they actually put you smoke or whatever to conceal a lot of the, the Balrog, kind of like in the movie, but even more so, just because I think it was such a demanding hog on the processor that they had to do something with it. But the roars that he does, the animations that he does, just look astounding. It's one of the best looking boss fights on the system. Looks great. So anyway, I'm done with the graphics. It just looks amazing. All the animations and <clears throat> different spells and vice versa just look great. Uh, yes, we can nitpick on a little bit, but seriously, this is a really good looking game for an RPG. Uh, outside of, like I said, a little bit of stiffness in the character models, just 
incredibly impressive. Um, you know, what else can you say? You get to revisit lots of cool scenes. Uh, you get to spend a lot of time in like places you didn't spend much time in the mor- in movies, like in Moria. You spend quite a while down there. Um, you get the traipse around Rohan, and they have caves there too. You can, cha- you can do that. You spend a lot of time in like Pelnor Fields or at the Citadel. So that's cool. Um, another potentially thing, frustrating thing for some people that maybe they're not prepared for. It's when you get to Helm's Deep, that's a whole chapter in itself, and you go along doing your normal stuff in Helm's Deep, and all of a sudden, you are thrown into a series of battles that you can't save in between. You don't really have much warning. You have some, but you don't really realize the how long is this is going to take. It takes like over an hour to get through this section, and you have you can't save. You don't know what hard times are, Daddy! So you gotta be very careful. And some of these fights aren't easy. So it's remember save and save often at Helm's Deep. Just a warning there and be prepared <laughs> because uh, you're gonna need some heals and reses because um, it gets pretty crazy unless you just completely ground past the point of relevance, which I do a lot of times too. But be prepared for that <clears throat> and be prepared for steep change in difficulty as once you get to Osgiliath and all that. Because like I said, the enemies hit way harder. They have tons more health and they're just loaded with status effects. And sometimes they resist yours. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and, and start wrapping things up and give you kind of a just an overall kind of grading score on this game. It's not, I'm not going to do stars or anything, but I think this game is really great. Uh, I think it's definitely worth uh, any fan of an RPG is looking for something, you know, not too brain taxing, whatever, and just something to plug in and have fun with every now and then because it's fun. Well, I'm not going to think. Why should I start now? They even included a really quirky mode in this game. It's simplistic, but really cool, and a good way to get some really top-notch gear, too. Uh, They call it Evil Mode. Once you defeat a chapter, you're able to go back and play like three or four battles as the bad guys versus the heroes. Very, very nice touch in using all the bad guys' you know abilities and powers. So it's a nice, just little extra bonus mode, and like I said, some of the best gear in the game is found there. Great stuff. This game, like I said, I think it really bucks the trend of cash grab, uh, poorly made licensed products, and just, I don't know, it's, it's a good one. If you can get past some of the lame story elements and some of the, you know, the, the B-list characters, it's just, there's a lot to be, a lot of good to be had here, so we can get this to focus in, but... There's a lot of different characters play up, a lot of different ways to approach situations, and I think it's just a good, solid, under-the-radar RPG that most people just don't talk about, and uh, I don't think that's really deserved it. I think it's a really good game, and um, if you can pick it up cheap and have the you know, desire to play an RTS or, or turn-based uh, RPG, I highly recommend it. So anyway, let's go ahead and get on out of here for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more video game review content in the near future, because you've, if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know me. If I can review it, I will do it. Uh, stay tuned for more review content different uh, mediums, like movies, TV shows, music. <laughs> There's a plethora of things out there for you to find. So, anyway, uh, let me know if you played this game in the comments below, and uh, if you have, what were your thoughts about it? Was my uh, review way off, or, you know, did you uh, enjoy it as well? I think it's an un- unsung gem. And it's one of the few PS2 games I'll play on a little more regular basis. Uh, maybe once every other year or so. I'll get in there and I'll plug this game in and just grind <laughs> to my little heart's content. So anyway, yeah, let me know in the comments below if you've played this game before. And if you haven't played this game and plan on playing it, let me know. I'd like to hear about your adventures with it after the fact. So yeah, thanks again for watching. Until next time, this is Genome. Just glad that Balrog isn't pissed at him. Out. <laughs>